All right, welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta, and this is our mock interview series. With me, I have Jamin Barton. Um, uh, uh, before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you are if, if you are an existing subscriber, please make sure you press the bell icon to get notified. All right. So the process will be same. Uh, I'll be the candidate. Jamin will be the interviewer, and he will ask me some questions. I'll answer him. He may ask some counter questions as well. Okay. So without taking much time, any further time, let's get started. Hi, Jamin. How are you? I'm good, Rajneesh. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. So, Rajneesh, let's get started. Sure. My first question is on MITM. What is man in the middle attack? Okay. So, uh, man in the middle attack is a kind of attack where uh, you know the attacker or any malicious attacker uh, can, can intercept all the communication happening between two parties. Okay, now the, the uh, this could happen in multiple ways. Uh, this could happen by intercepting the traffic. This is mainly a trouble if the session is not encrypted. When we don't have, where we don't have, uh, you know, uh, encryption going on, and it's a plain text communication happening, anybody in the world can possibly intercept those communication. Uh, but the major challenges occur in case of Wi-Fi kind of connection. If somebody can uh, intercept the connection in between by, you know, by uh, by using uh, DN DNS spoofing or ARP spoofing, they can actually redirect all the traffic and they can listen to those data, modify those data and send some, send some corrupted or malicious content to the uh, to both the parties as well. So that, that's, that, that's, that's the man in the middle attack, yeah. Okay, great. You just talked about uh, MITM attack. So can you please give me some of the techniques that you used to execute this attack? Okay, so from the attacker point of view, right? I mean, how attacker would execute this attack, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, well, I mean, there are multiple ways the the man in the middle attack can be executed. Uh, earlier, it was a big trouble when all the communication, most of the communication wasn't on HTTPS. But after uh, encryption, after uh, migration of most of the website on HTTPS, now that problem is got eradicated on a very large scale. But we still have a problem. Let's say the attacker is in the same LAN network, or maybe we are in the airport, or maybe the hotel room. So the, we still have some possibility. One of the possible uh, man in the middle attack is the ARP. ARP spoofing. Uh, basically, ARP is address resolution protocol. So uh, uh, let's say we have a new computer on the in the moment or maybe new device, mobile phone or something. So in order to establish any communication in the internet, uh, the device needs the destination MAC address. Okay, and uh, basically, if we look at the IP address, we have the source IP address. So on IP address, destination will be the destination server, maybe Google IP address. Uh, source MAC address will be the device own MAC address. What is still left is the destination MAC address. In order to get the destination MAC address against the destination IP address, address resolution protocol is used, which is nothing but a broadcast frame in the layer two, in the layer two uh, layer, I mean, data link layer of the OSI model. So uh, basically, an attacker can actually claim to have that that specific destination IP address, and in that case, the attacker can send the forged uh, ARP message to everyone in the network, or maybe the it can reply as well. So other devices then start updating their ARP uh, their ARP table, and they also update their ARP table. Uh, maybe assuming that it's the MAC address of the default gateway or any device. And by doing that, now uh, going further, all the device will sending the all the traffic to that uh, attacker machine. 
and that how attacker can listen to all the data he can possibly send it to the google or internet so that attacker uh, the user will still be an impression that okay the communication is still happening happening okay uh, there is another way as well of uh, a man in the middle attack called dns spoofing so in which what happened is a user the genuine user will unknowingly access the spoofed website or the attacker website believing that it is uh, authenticated because a dns is a udp packet it sends the uh is sent the dns query uh to get the ip address of the destination server because in the internet computer don't understand the name right the computer computer don't understand google.com computer needs the ip address in order to send the packet so if if there is a malicious actor or uh, device claiming that yes he is having the genuine google.com server ip address the device will update it so that that's where the problem comes in and that's where some of the advancement has been done at the dns level as well like dns uh, another one is the ssl scraping so this is possible in case of vulnerable ssl version if any of the website is running that where the attacker can intercept the uh, HTTPS request and then they, they, they off the user request and then they can strip off the actual HTTP header and you know uh, remove the entire encryption layer and can see the data inside. So that that's pretty much possible. Uh, in the Wi-Fi network, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a very uh, very popular among the attacker community, I would say. So yeah, the, these are some of the examples. Great. So this is from the attacker view. Now uh -huh. let's go on the defender side. How to defend this attack? Well, I mean, uh, um, to be to be really honest, the solution, the security controls are pretty straightforward. Uh, we have to have the encryption. No, and it has to be a very uh, uh, strong, non vulnerable standards of SSL and TLS, of course. So we need to make sure all the communication happening in the network, it's it's all encrypted. Okay, so encryption is must. We should have HTTPS for all the web traffic. We should have SSH for all the remote logging. In spite, uh, uh, you know, instead of uh, telnet, we should block all the telnet traffic. We should use all the SSH. We should block all the plain HTTP traffic and use HTTPS instead. And uh, we should also use VPN, IPsec VPN, remote access VPN, and we should use some strong authentication protocol like AES-256 as well, and even uh, on the hashing side as well. Now, second thing that we should really do is this certificate uh, validation. We should have uh, a strong criteria to verify the certificate authority to, uh, to detect any unauthorized changes or spoof certificate in the, in the environment as well. Uh, other thing that we could possibly do is the, uh, which is not a one-time work. It should be a continuous process. Uh, we should have uh, uh, you know a proper network segmentation in the environment. Maybe it's a remote branch office. Maybe it's in the data center. Maybe it's in the plant area. So we have to have a proper network segmentation. It's very 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 important in in case of uh, industrial area where. OT and IT network sits together. It's even important in case of uh, banking and financial sector as well, where they com they comply with the PCI DSS compliance. So, if, if, I mean, I'm not saying for others it's not relevant or others don't do it. For them, it's very very important, and they highly highly prefer this. So, network segmentation is very very important. We need to ensure that uh, all the access to the data, the crown jewel is all done based on need to know basis so only the people who really need access to this, those data should be allowed the rest everyone should be blocked from accessing that data so these are the three solutions we should have the encryption uh, uh encryption at every level possible and second the certificate uh, validation process third we should have a proper network segmentation i think this would help us to mitigate or uh, to uh, to bring down all all the possible risks from the man in the middle attack. So yeah. 
Great. That was a great explanation. Thank you. Sure. Sir, thank this you. This is thank all so about much, I have for today's. All right. But thank you so much, Jamin. Um, it was a fantastic session. Um, so um, now uh, I just want to give you some pro tips. Uh, I, I Please make sure while explaining this, uh, you need to be aware that uh, you know you are very specific about each words that you are actually presenting. So make sure you are having experience about encryption. You should know how SSL handshake really works because interviewer might might also ask about what is SSL or TLS handshake and how does it how, how does it work. Uh, uh, they may they may also ask you how DNS works. They may also ask you even how ARC works. Okay, so just go back to the earlier session. You will understand how uh, you know ARC really works. Uh, you need to understand about uh, what, what is VPN, what are types of VPN, IPsec VPN, remote access VPN. So this is very important. There's a possibility that you know there could be a few more questions or uh, you know the interviewer might have. So this is the pro tip from my side. Uh, all right, so this is all for today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you in the next video. This is me, Rajdeesh Gupta with Javin Padak. Bye for now.